Okay, here we go then, part three, final step of the gearbox rebuild. Here's the gearbox, we've now got the gears in, all turned nice and beautifully. So today we're just going to now fit the differential. Here we've got the diff housing, we've now polished both faces, here, here and here, just to make sure the gasket's sealed properly. So here's the gearbox, we're going to tip this over to start with, just to make it easier. Here's the diff we built earlier, as they say. Okay, we've done a YouTube video on building these, so you can actually relate to that from the previous. So now we're going to drop this into the gearbox, make sure the teeth on here mesh with the teeth on the pinion in the bottom as you drop it in. There you go. Push him over this way, because we're going to push this differential bearing back that way when we put the first side cover on. So push him down, there we go. So that's all in place now. So now, if you turn it over, the whole gearbox will turn everything. We need a bead of sealer around here for the differential housing to sit onto. So we'll just pop a bead of sealer on. Not too much because it goes everywhere otherwise. There we go. Okay. Differential housing, you'll note we've put a new bush in here. The old one was perished on the rubber, so we've pressed a new bush in there. Pop this one down now onto the dowels as it goes down. There we go. Okay, we're now going to put the bolts in. So we'll put the large ones in to start with. These are the 3.8 UNF ones. So one, two, three, four. Small ones in afterwards. These are the 5 16th ones. So you've got one, two, three. You'll notice we've just wire brushed the heads of these off just to make them nice for the video. But uh, we're just going to put bolts in now. So spin those in. Just so that the silicon squeezes out. There we go. Pull them all down. Not talking them down at this point in time. The reason we don't talk them right down is because we've got to push this differential bearing over that way with the side cover in a moment, which you'll see. Okay, there we go. We're just going to pop the oil seal in the diff side covers now. What you'll have to remember is there's two different sizes of both the bushes in here and the seals. These ones are for pot joints and pot joint shafts. You'll find there's a bigger diameter one for hardy spicer couplings and LSD couplings. But these are, like I say, standard pot joints. Okay, we're doing this in the vice, obviously because this is a show you how to do it at home. We normally do it in the press over there, but just to give you a rough idea. Here's a socket, there we go. That's down in home. Just a bit further down this side. There we go. So that's the first one in. Second one to go. Thank you. Pop the seal on the top. Socket roughly the same size. There we go, just a little bit more on that side. There we go, that one's in. Just a smear of grease around both sides of the gaskets. Just literally, like so. Gasket on, another one on the top. Okay, so that's ready for fitting now. But before we fit that, We've got to fit this little piece. Now this stops you going into two gears at once and it also operates the selector mechanism. And the ball actually locates in each one of those grooves. Okay, we're going to pop the sleeve in first. That will push into there. Okay, another little tiny drop of grease around the outside. Put the O-ring in. 
Okay, now ball bearing down the middle, followed by the spring. There we go. And as you push the spring in, you'll see it's positioning the gear selector there. So there goes the cover. Got some new bolts in here. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five. This is what they call an oil leak preventer. So it goes in before the oil seal. So we drop that in, down that. Okay, not gonna to be too tight. It just needs to be compressed past the O-ring. There we go, should go straight in now. There we go, one, two. That's it. Okay, pop the oil seal over the top. You notice I've just pre-greased it to save. There we go. So we just tap that one down. There we go. So oil seal in place. So we've now got to go to the other side now and actually shim the diff. When we put the diff in, we pushed it that way. But because of the step on the back of the diff side cover, that has now preloaded the bearing that side and pushed it this way. So we've now got to do the same with this one, but obviously that dimension is already predetermined because it can't move. And this is predetermined, so this is where the shims come into place. So what we need to do is pop this on just here, like so, and we need now to measure the gasket, which is 16 thou thick. So we need this to be standing off 16 thou plus a three thou pinch. So we need to be able to get a 19 thou feeler gauge in there. Here we've got range of shims. So we just put a double grease on these just to stop them falling in and out. There we go. Just holds them in the gearbox casing while we test what we're going to test. So pop them in there. That will hold them in place now. Theoretically, there we go. Okay, put the side cover on. Now you'll see we are just about flush. So we now need another 16 thou for the gasket and another three thou for the preload. And we've found another shim here now. This one is where we need to be. So we'll pop this one in, put a little bit of grease on him to hold him in place. There we go. Now we're going to pop the housing back on. And now we need 19 thou. This is a preset 19 thou feeler gauge. And you'll see now we are just 19 thou. So we've got the right amount of shims in there. So when we put a 16 thou gasket in there, it means we've got 3 thou pinch on the bearings once we compress this. So what we'll do now, we'll just pop those shims back in there. They can stay there and we'll just grease the faces for the gasket gasket on line them up with the holes another little bit of grease pop that back on now some screws Pull him up. Okay, we'll just turn the gearbox back round on his side and we've got to tighten these up now. These are the ones where we just did them up hand tight. We're now going to pull these right down. One, two, that's three small ones. These are the three eighth ones. So 
One. Two. There we go. So we've got the differential all in, side covers on, everything's in there now. So you'll see now, if we turn the input gear, it will turn the gear shafts, which will turn the pinion, which will in turn turn the crown wheel, turn the differential, which now turns the pot joint shafts, which will drive your wheels. So that's complete. Now the only thing that's not on this gearbox is the speedo housing, because the customers forgot to bring it in. We haven't got one to fit, so you do have to fit that, but it's a straight fit. Now what we would suggest on a gearbox build like this, because it's got straight cut roller drop gears, straight cut box, this one's got a cross pin. It's okay, but far superior is this helical gear differential. We're just going to take this over to the bench now, and we're going to take the lid off this so you can see how good these are inside. Okay, there's all the screws out. So what we'll do now is we'll lift this section out for you. There you go. That's the top hat. There you'll see all the gears and the gear reduction mechanism on it. Okay, these are ideal for a fast road or a track day car. Far less aggressive than a clutch plate differential because obviously they don't snatch on and off. We'll just pop this right out so you can see internally. There you go. Now you'll see these gears transmit the power to these gears, which then transmit the power through the differential onto the same shaft on the other side. And there's a little tiny bit of preload you can adjust with the two Belleville washers inside there. But apart from that, beautifully engineered, lifetime warranty, worth a look at. Okay guys, there's the gearbox, there's the diff. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like the content, please subscribe for some more.